Hey everybody, my name's Frank from the City of Kings and today I'm going to be talking about work and management. Now this might be a strange surprising thing in a big adventure game that we have a big work and management part, but it was kind of crucial to me to give this full RPG kind of model which involves gathering resources and trading for items, completing quests by helping people find the missing things they need. And work and management is a big part of board games that I really enjoy. So I wanted to find a way to take the kind of big adventure role playing game and merge it with a kind of work and management system that might be a little bit different to what a lot of you are used to. So in the City of Kings, you control two characters at the start of the game. You have your hero, who we're not going to talk about too much now, but they're kind of your attacking, adventuring um, character who can do the creature combat system and all of these kind of things. But you also have your worker, and your worker is an entirely standalone piece that can be moved independently, and you choose on your turn whether you want to do actions for your hero, for your worker, or for both. So you can use all of your actions for one, or share them however you seem fit. So in the game, your worker has three stats. It has a movement stat, it has a gathering stat, and a scavenging stat. And as you play through the game, you can choose to upgrade any of these three stats however you wish. So you can increase your movement, your gathering, or scavenging. So in the game, there are four resources, which are wood, fish, linen, and ore and you will find these spread throughout the world. It's a modular board, so you'll be turning over tiles and eventually you'll find these locations. There's several of them spread around and they're of different sizes. So you'll be able to move your worker to one of these locations. Say you find a forest, and at the forest, your worker will be able to gather wood. So depending on your gathering skill, you'll roll the dice. And that dice will come back with either one, two, three, or an attention icon. Of course, if you get the one, two, or three, you'll just get free wood from the forest. And if you get the attention icon, then you grab an attention token and place it on that location tile. Once you've got four attention tokens on any tile, you get the attention of a creature that comes and attacks that location. So what this means is you want to be kind of careful how much you use one location in a short period of time because you will attract more creatures, giving you the requirement of moving to different locations and managing your resource income dependent on what's important to you and how much risk you want to take. Now of course, the workers will get trapped by any creatures, so if you're not careful, your workers can be hiding behind a bush and your hero will have to come along and free him from the creature. Now, if just gathering wasn't enough in itself, and of course you can increase your gathering skill through the customization, which allows you to roll two, three, four, or five dice in a single turn, you can also do scavenging. Now scavenging works differently in that scavenging is used on enemy bases that your hero has cleared out. So once you've killed a creature and a tile becomes free of that problem, your worker can move in and scavenge the location and looking for different items. Scavenging also works by rolling a dice, but in this instance you will only find ore, fish or wood. And you also have a chance of an attention token, but it's much lower. So what this means, if you want a specific resource, you can go and find a resource location to gather. But if you just want some stuff and you want to kind of keep going and just generally improving how much resource you have, maybe scavenging is a better option because you've got a lower chance of attracting attention. So this gives you a really neat system where you can improve how quickly your worker can move so they can get from locations, or you can focus on gathering, you can focus on scavenging, or you can be a hybrid of the three. As you improve your worker, you'll eventually unlock a second worker, who whilst they have shared stats, again works as an independent character on the board, allowing you to move from different locations and should one worker get pinned or trapped by a creature, another worker can continue to adventure and gain resources. We hope that this system will give you a really flexible way of gathering and managing that kind of worker placement system, but whilst you can focus on whether you want to just do this, or whether you want to kind of control your hero as well, 
We often find that in a team, because this is a cooperative game of two to four players, one player often will heavily go into work and management, whilst the other players will deal with the adventuring and the combat. So this gives you that option that if you really like just worker management, you can heavily focus on that. But if it's just something that's not your cup of tea, you can do it just a little bit. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of our worker management system. And thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.